Hi. Now there's going to be times when you come across say first order differential equations, something like this for instance, where it doesn't fall into a common type like separating the variables or using an integrating factor. So what we do is we use a substitution to change the equation that we're given into some particular form that we would recognize how to handle. And quite often you're given that substitution. And that's the purpose of this tutorial, to show you how it works. So if we take this equation, let's suppose that you're given this substitution to say that z equals y divided by x. Let's say let z equal that, okay? Now what we do is that we change dy by dx. We modify the equation, get rid of the y, and get an equation in terms of z's and x's. All right? And so from this equation what we can do is make y the subject. So we get y equals x times z. Okay. So if we need to change dy by dx, we need to differentiate this equation with respect to x. And that means that therefore dy by dx is going to equal, well, we need to use the product rule for this particular part here. So we take x, for instance, and multiply it by the differential of z with respect to x. That's going to be dz dx, and then plus and then we take the z and we multiply it by the differential of x with respect to x, which is 1. z times 1 then is just simply z. So that's dy by dx, and you're going to quite often find that you're going to uh, need to do something along these kind of lines. Use the product rule, so I hope you've got uh, the kind of idea of how to go about that. OK, so we're now ready to do some substitutions. So for the first bracket here, we therefore have x squared. OK, let's just put that in brackets here. Minus y squared, but y equals x times z. So if we square that, that's going to be minus x squared, z squared. And then we've got to multiply it by dy by dx. So that is now going to be x dz by dx plus z. So we'll just put that in brackets. So x dz by dx plus z. And then we've got minus xy, so minus x, but y is xz. So we've just got multiplied by xz, and that equals 0. OK, next what I'd want to do is start to expand the bracket here. So we've got x squared then times x dz dx. That's going to give us x cubed dz by dx. And then we've got x squared times the plus z, so x squared z. Now we've got minus x squared z squared times x dz dx. So that's going to be minus x cubed z squared dz dx and finally minus x squared z squared times the plus z so that's going to be minus x squared z cubed and then we've got this last term here minus x squared z and that equals zero so what I notice is that these two terms, x squared z and minus x squared z, well, they're going to give us 0 there. And what I can do now is group together these two terms containing dz dx. I can pull out x cubed as a common factor as well. So therefore, what we've got is x cubed multiplied by 1. OK, I'm going to put dz dx at the rear of this bracket here. So I've got x cubed times 1, and I've got minus, and then just the z squared, and then write the dz by dx at the rear of the bracket. OK, 
Always a good position for writing DZDX at the rear brackets rather than at the front. And now I'm just going to add x squared z cubed to both sides so I get equals x squared z cubed. And I can see that this differential equation now I can separate the variables. I can get all the z's on one side and all the x's on the other side. If I divide both sides by z cubed and divide by x cubed and rearrange this with the dx over here I end up with 1 minus z squared over z cubed dz equals and then x squared divided by x cubed is going to be 1 over x and then that will be dx and I can integrate both sides so okay so that's separating the variables there so with this substitution then that's good it just allows us to get it into this form now and you might even like to pause the video at this stage and uh, just carry on and complete this example I'll just give you a few moments if you'd like to do that okay welcome back if you uh, did carry on with this well here's the next part anyway what we can do here is think of this as being the integral then of 1 over z cubed which is z to the power minus 3 and then z squared over z cubed well, that's going to be minus 1 over z and we're integrating this with respect to z and we've got on the other side the integral of 1 over x with respect to x now if I just border this off okay we come around here looks a bit ugly unfortunately but it'd be just good to keep this on the same screen well the integral of z to the power minus 3 that's going to be z to the minus 2 all divided by minus 2 and then we've got the integral of minus 1 over z with respect to z so that's going to be minus the natural log of z and then equals and the integral of 1 over x respect to x well that's going to be the natural log of x and then don't forget the constant of integration plus c now we need to get our answer in terms of x's and y's so we need to substitute for z as y over x so if we make that substitution we therefore have well this is going to be minus 1 over 2z squared and so when we make that substitution we'll end up with inverting this fraction here so it'll turn out to be minus x squared over 2y squared and then we've got minus the natural log of z which is y over x and then equals the natural log of x plus the constant of integration plus c so what I could do now is just remove the 2y squared by multiplying throughout by 2y squared and also changing this to the natural log of y minus the natural log of x so if we do that we therefore have got minus x squared and then minus 2y squared multiplied by the natural log of y minus the natural log of x and that will equal well remember we've got to multiply this term by 2y squared so we've got 2y squared natural log of x and we've also got that constant c to multiply with the 2y squared so we've got 2y squared times that constant c let's expand the bracket here so we therefore have minus x squared minus 2y squared natural log of y plus 2y squared natural log of x equals 2y squared natural log of x plus 2y squared times that constant c and I can see that 2y squared natural log of x occurs here and here so that when I subtract that from both sides that's going to disappear so if I add 
x squared and 2y squared natural log of y to both sides, then I can pull out 2y squared as a common factor between this term, so it'd be natural log of y, and we've got this term down here, plus c, okay? And then if I add the x squared as well to both sides, we've got plus x squared, and it will equal 0. So there you go, a general solution then to our differential equation. Just by making this substitution, it helped us change the form of this into one that involved separating the variables. Now I've got another example in this series where we make another substitution and it will change the differential equation into one which involves an integrating factor. So you might like to try that and you'll find that there's a link to this particular video just here, okay? Or you could just go on my website examsolutions.net and you'll also see links there and uh, other links as well back to differential equations of other types, okay?